China trade war lead to a bipolar world? And would the West remain dominant? Is the investment industry complacent about the social and economic impact of artificial intelligence? And is a true commitment to ESG the key to tapping into a whole new generation of investors? Just some of the headline questions being asked on this day two of Fund Forum International 2018. What better way to start proceedings on the day that Donald Trump met Kim Jong-un than by delving into the geopolitical minefield and economic effects of international relationships? Leading economist Linda Yu examined how establishing the free trade of services could bring about real global change in terms of social cohesion and how the appetite for those products is set for a meteoric rise as more of the world's population become middle class. By 2030, 8.6 billion people will live on the planet. 4.9 billion will be middle income. So that means earning between 10 to $100 per day, adjusted for what a dollar buys in their country. Now, of course, one of the most striking things about when people enter the middle class is that they consume services. So they have disposable income. They think about what should I save and invest in. All the decisions that we take in the West for granted, um, Asian and emerging economies who are beginning to think about, um, for instance, professional services, accounting needs, uh, financial planning, all of those things mean that when economies become middle income or middle class, their demand for services go up. Meanwhile, others stressed the importance of genuine AI expertise in firms and the need for digital transformation. If you want to get expertise around uh, AI, in my view, artificial intelligence will become a more and more important uh, engine or core skill of any asset management firm, uh, not only to manage their own business better, uh, but also to give tools to fundamental analysts uh, to help them uh, look at the news, look at cluster of information in any languages, uh, to help them as well of course as in the quantitative space becoming much more sophisticated quant uh, strategies. The industry is wondering what they can do with artificial intelligence. Um, one good example would be Alipay, which uses this technology to provide personalized service at scale. They have 870 million clients, which is almost three times population of America. So they provide the service personalized at scale. That means business growth at scale. And with greater personalization, the potential for better alignment with investors' core values. In the UK, what we're seeing is that the social impact um, uh, investment sector is growing between 20 to 30% per year, and globally that's obviously even larger. If you are a product provider, a fund manager, actually your customers are changing, the demographic is changing. So even from just self-interested perspective, I think it is important uh, to look at this type of investment uh, because quite frankly, if your customers aren't getting it, this type of investment opportunities from you, they would just simply go elsewhere. The message, listen to what customers want. And as behavioural finance expert Greg Davies advocated, use personalised data, digital real-time solutions and behavioural design to actively encourage better decision-making in investors. The reason people don't save enough, don't invest enough and don't uh, insure enough is it's complicated and they can't be bothered. So as an industry we tend to go, we've solved the problem, here's the right answer. And we forget that the right answer is almost never a comfortable answer to people because it's complicated. The role of the decision support tool is to take the complicated thing and break it down into a journey that we can lead people comfortably to sophisticated patterns of behavior in an uncomfortable environment. With a really good interface. With a really good interface. So a content-rich day in Berlin at a moment in time where asset management could be part of the solution for so many, improving financial health and global prosperity.